Hello, it's nice to see you again. I'm Noreen Burke, owner of Call Clutter Fairy Home Organizing, and this is my YouTube channel, The Crafty Organizer. I love bringing you guys tips on organizing, decluttering, crafting, giving you reviews, but one of my favorites is upcycling either thrifted items or curbside treasures, and that's what we're going to do today. I found this little table on the side of the road and it was pretty gross, <laughs> um, but I saw potential in it. When I was looking at it, it was dirty and it was discolored, but really there was nothing wrong with it. It wasn't rusty. It didn't have any tears on the top except for one little teeny tiny one that was on the cover. So I had seen another post on one of my farmhouse Facebook pages and I have tried to track this down again. So if this was your original idea, please, please message me because I'd love to tag you on this. Um, but I can't find the post to give the original person credit, but I thought it was such a wonderful idea that I could not wait to redo it. So as you can see, this looks like it's had a little bit of life to it. It had some staining on it, which may have been why they got rid of it. I don't know if it was outside and an animal got to it because there are some weird marks on it. But there was only one tiny tear in the cover, so I thought this would be really easy to recover. The back side of it does look a little bit rougher. Uh, this is where you could tell it had been outside with the elements. There is some questionable staining on it, and obviously there's been a couple of little tiny animals or little tiny bugs that have nested in here. But I'm going to get this all cleaned up. So the very first thing I needed to do was separate the tabletop from the legs. Now this is actually really easy. There are these little brackets that are bolted into the tabletop, but there's little screws against the table base that just unscrew super easily. There are three of these on each side. So I just took my ratchet screwdriver and took those out. Now, when I went to lift up the base, I noticed that it was sticking and then upon closer inspection, I realized that each leg had one more little screw attached. So I just had to go inside and it lifted right off. Then I got a little pair of pliers and a flathead screwdriver. This is so I can begin removing the staples from the old vinyl from the tabletop. Now, my cardboard was a little soft. I don't know if it was meant to be that way initially, or again, if it was from being outside, but it's still sturdy. When I, whenever I pressed in my screwdriver, it didn't give way, but the staples removed super easily. So I just one by one lifted those up and I did discover a little trick that if I went from the inside where the vinyl is, I could just super easily lift up those staples. Once I went all the way around all four sides, I was able to just pull away that vinyl. Now I had hoped to reuse their foam, but the foam was pretty, pretty bad. So I'm just going to throw this whole thing away, making sure I have all of the little staples so nobody steps on them. I've already washed off the legs and gotten rid of all of the dirt. Now I'm just drying it off and making sure that it's ready for paint. For spray painting the legs, I'm just looking for it to be a good solid coverage. And what I was surprised with is how nicely this took paint. I mean, this undercarriage right here looks brand new again. So make sure you're looking at these from all sides so that you don't see any of the original color. If you do see some imperfections, just sand them down a little bit before or after and give it a second shot. Now my fix for this particle board is I got a can of spray paint and I was going to spray paint it. Now I noticed as I was doing this that it was really a sheer paint. I'm not sure why, but I was having a hard time. So I gave up on this can and I, I, it's just not working. So I went and got my Rust-Oleum, which I think is one of the better brands. And you can already see the huge difference the different brand makes with giving this a good solid coverage so that it looks perfect. Now I'm getting my new cover ready. I had an old blanket that I wasn't using so I'm going to use that as my cushion because when I did this video it was like 5 30 in the morning and I could not run over to Joann's or Hobby Lobby. So I just cut it down slightly bigger than the tabletop.
and I made sure it was lined up with the buffalo check that I'm using. It's pretty easy to see where the line is. So I just went folding it around and I kind of eyeballed it to make sure that it was straight so that when I put it on, it doesn't look crooked. Now this is where it becomes surprisingly easy. Remember those little brackets I talked about? I noticed that if I spin them around, they almost act like a little holder. So I slid them out of the way and then slid them back so it acts as an extra hand. Now, this might be easier for you because you'll have both hands. I was using one hand for the camera. <laughs> I did not use my staple gun because the staple gun staples that I have are longer. So I used my regular office stapler. Mine does open up, but then I just pressed it down and once it was open, and it was super easy to staple into. I went about every inch just to make sure that these were secure, but the first side I did loosely, the second side I cut down so that I don't have too much extra. You don't want the fabric or the lining that you're using to impede with the brackets because then you'll have difficulty attaching the legs back later. So one by one, I just made sure it was pulled really tightly and I usually start from the center and work my way to the corners. That way I can ensure that it's a nice even pull all the way around. Then I check my work as I go along to make sure that it is in fact laying flat. And then when I got to the corners, I pulled the corner first uh, at that very corner point and I stapled that down and then I pulled the other corners around it and I used the most staples here and then I cut off the excess with a pair of scissors so that once again when I reattach the legs there's nothing impeding the attachment. Now that I'm all done with that I check it one more time and do my own little personal happy dance and I am ready to reattach the legs. This was a super easy and fast project. So this piece was in pretty rough shape. Now I know I could have just wiped it off and put a tablecloth over it, but I really did love that look that I found on that Facebook post and I wanted to duplicate it. The total cost for this was under $10. I got the vinyl from Hobby Lobby and it was on 25% off sale, but with your 40% off it would be even less expensive, but that came to $6 and then I had my can of spray paint which was right around $4. I am really happy with the look of this. I think it definitely is something I'll be proud to show and now that it's all cleaned up, I'm not afraid to put it in my house because the underside is that pretty blue. And I'm going to sign when I did it. I love when I redo a project, I love signing it on the back of where I found it, how much I spent to refurbish it, and the date that I did it. And it gives me a wonderful little walk down memory lane as I pull things out. This looks like a brand new table, and I'm so glad I didn't ignore it, allowing it to go into a landfill and not be loved. And not that I needed another space, but now I have another place to enjoy my coffee in the morning. Do you have a table like this that you could redo or have you come across one of these? I am really happy with this project. As I said, it was super quick and easy. I was trying to get to a job the other day when I did this and I only had a little bit of time. So I got up at like 5 a.m. and I was literally done with this project right around 6.30, uh, and that was including the dry time for painting and filming. So you guys, this is such a fast project. I hope you will try tackling it if you have one of these tables. If not, keep your eye out for one. That's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you are not a part of my friend mail yet, please check out that information below. I like sending out cards and letters to those of you who may not have friends and family around. It's just so much fun to get something in the mail. And if you're interested in reciprocating or just sending a little gift or card to me, my PO box is in the description below, as well as information for my Patreon. I have gotten new Patreons and I am so thankful to you. At the end of every month, I'll update the list right here. But these are the people who are help supporting my channel so that I can make these videos, but also get to my ultimate goal, which is to get an RV and get to travel around the US helping those of you who are having problem areas or who just don't have the ability to get organized. So if you're interested in that, that information is also in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in three days. Bye.